Hey, Andy here. Commenter in one of my videos asked a really interesting question, kind of an obvious question, but I'm kind of dumbfounded I didn't think of it. And the question was around how do you deploy Rancher? How do you deploy Rancher in a way that it makes it easy to control a harvester, right? So the idea is you can use Harvester as an infrastructure provider for Rancher. I've got a video uh, here, but I'll link it in the show notes and I'll try and do the taggy card thing. Um, but the idea is that, you know, Rancher can manage Harvester as an infrastructure provider. So how do you deploy Rancher in a scenario like that? There's two, three kind of schools of thought on it. The first one is going to be taking advantage of the add-ons. So let's talk about add-ons first. So if you're looking at the Harvester documentation, whoops, sorry. If you're looking at the Harvester documentation, you can see that we've got one for is the latest. Under advanced, there is a section called available add-ons and add-ons. So let's go to available add-ons. And this is actually kind of interesting. Couple things that have been added. The first one is local storage support as of 1.4.0. So this is basically using local LVM on the node itself, attaching to a physical disk. Okay, simple install with an experimental add-ons, kubectl apply. Okay, and like I said, it creates an LVM. So if you've got multiple disks locally that you want to kind of separate out from Longhorn, this is a great way to do it. Uh, and really, if you look at the um, kind of blurb, it basically says to create persistent volumes for your workloads with better performance and latency. Longhorn wants to have three replicas, wants to spread your data out. Harvester is very chatty over the network. So this would eliminate some of that. Potentially, if you're doing it as a single node cluster, a single node harvester, this would be a great addition. Uh, looking at some of the other add-ons, we've got the NVIDIA driver toolkit. So if you're running GPUs, this is a great way to kind of integrate that. Uh, manage DHCP. So this is kind of a fun one. What this basically allows you to do is to run IPAM, right? DHCP, IP management, on the VM network, and it doesn't have to be physically attached to your host network. So this is how you can kind of obfuscate some of that and then take advantage of the harvester load balancer function to create kind of like a VPC within your harvester cluster. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I personally, for my home lab use, I just put it on my home network and then my home router uh, around Ubiquity takes care of DHCP. So I don't need to do this, but this is a really interesting way to create that obfuscation, to create that separation, that network isolation that you may be desiring. I'm going to go around, we're kind of going up the list. We got Ranch Manager, I'm going to get that in a second. Obviously the PCI device is the PCI pass-through. I've demonstrated that in several other videos with GPUs, works great. VM import, if you're coming from, say, VMware or OpenStack, uh, you know, good old, uh, yeah, OpenStack, that's the open source name. Um, this would be a great way to kind of import like the VMDK or the images. Uh, it is an offline, it is not a live migration, but it's a way that you can actually convert those images over. Harvester Cedar is a way for doing out of band management, so IPMI. So a lot of the server grade stuff have uh, like the DRAC cards, uh, I forget what HP calls their remote tool, but HP, Dell, they've all got external like microcomputers, microcontrollers in their servers. So you can control the server's power and things like that and BIOS remotely. This is the way that you can actually management. Uh, yeah, so ILO, that's it. ILO or DRAC. <laughs> that's funny. ILO or iDRAC. There you go. That's cool. So yeah, those are the two. So that's kind of cool way you can kind of integrate that into Harvester itself. Now, Rancher Manager. This is the one that kind of dovetails into this, this topic. Rancher Manager is an interesting experimental add-on where it creates a V-cluster. For those that aren't initiated, a V-cluster, uh, it's, yeah, it's by loft. Basically what it does is it, it creates a cluster within a cluster but it has a very limited set of metrics and it's in its own namespace. And effectively what it allows you to do is to take a Kubernetes cluster and slice it up a little bit and provide a fake virtual cluster to a specific uh, user for them to deploy. So when they deploy, all they see is their uh, virtual cluster, their namespace is their resources and they don't see the other resources within the main cluster. Pros and cons, obviously, to that. But the nice thing about this add-on 
is that you can actually deploy a full-fledged rancher manager within a V cluster on the harvester host itself. And what this allows you to do, so he says add experimental and you give it a host name. What this allows you to do is to run rancher on a harvester node or cluster locally. Okay, so that's kind of one method. The other method is if you already have uh, VMware or uh, Proxmox or other virtualization within your home network, run a Rancher VM there. Another interesting idea is running Rancher in a VM on Harvester. It gets a little inception-y in terms of what resources you want to commit, how you want to do it. Um, to be honest, like this being an experimental feature, but you can see it's been out for quite a long time. And right before I left Rancher Government, there was a lot of conversations around Rancher becoming a full-fledged member. Like, in other words, not being experimental, being fully supported at some point down the road. Uh, obviously, we're not there yet, so who knows if and when it does come. Right, so we got the option of, right, we can use the Rancher Manager as a vCluster add-on. We can run Rancher Manager on a single node, uh, RKE2, K3S, cluster in a VM. We can then also run it remotely on bare metal. We can run it remotely in a VM. It kind of gives you a couple different options. You can even run it in the cloud like I have in that video, which is kind of interesting. It limits some of the functionality. Personally, it really depends, in my mind, it depends on what you're trying to solve for, what resources you have, what is the rate of change, and what level of failure are you okay with, right? The term failure budget ha has been used around in the last couple of years or, you know, your service level agreement, your SLA. How much downtime can you actually afford? For me, I don't run Rancher Manager in my home cluster because I'm just running a single node harvester. I like it. It's simple. I don't have to worry about too much management overhead. Um, I don't use some of the automation tools because right now the only, the only virtual machine running is my NAS. Uh, I had a video on that where I've got NVMe pass through for the storage for the for TrueNAS and it works awesome. It works great. Uh, really good performance out of it for my use case. Um, I think if I, uh, I if I were building this out for a large scale cluster, I would probably have like I had a customer that had what do they have like sixty nodes, sixty bare metal two U servers. I would do like three is the management layer and then have a handful of uh harvester on the you know as separate nodes so the the rancher manager would be on a three node cluster sitting outside the physical servers so that way there's rancher redundancy it's a separate cluster for manageability it's separate hardware i would potentially spread that out over different racks just to make sure that uh there isn't a single point of failure, which is, which is good. I hope this helps. Um, by the way, the install for this, it's a single kubectl apply, which is great. Um, I hope this helps uh, answer some questions and feel free to reach out, comment, like subscribe, share all the good YouTube stuff and have a good, oh, hold on, don't do that. Hold on. Have a good day. Stop recording. Stop. <laughs>